Sin City short movie review. This is put together by three stories. The the hard goodbye with Marv Mickey Rourke in one of his most badass roles and pretty much the perfect role for Mickey Rourke, just a brutal animal. He has just met this woman named Goldie and you know he's just completely fallen for her. He's, he remarks that she smells the way angels ought to smell and they spend the night together. The next morning he wakes up and he finds her dead and the cops are at his door. He's been framed for her murder and he's now determined to avenge her death because she was kind to him and not very many people have been. Then we have The Big Fat Kill with Dwight Clive Owen, also excellent, who follows Jackie Boy because he and his four friends are drunk and out of control but he finds that he Jackie Boy went to Old Town, where even the cops don't go. Old Town is where the sex workers reside and rule. They dish out their own brand of justice. If you try to mess with them, all of them are armed. So it does seem like they'll be able to handle Jackie Boy, but there's something about Jackie Boy that Dwight doesn't know yet. And finally, That Yellow Bastard with Bruce Willis as the cop Hardigan. And it's Bruce Willis at some of his most awesome. Think about that for a second. And it's also, you know, like his best role in like a decade. He is desperate to protect a young girl, Nancy Callahan, from a rapist. A real bastard. Rourke Jr. Spoiled brat. All the villains in this are people you truly hate. He's one of the worst, actually. This is essentially noir with a real shot of adre adrenaline. Excuse me. It follows that bleak look, look excuse me, setting and you know characters and it just, you know, takes it a bit, you know, further. It goes a bit more intense. All of our heroes are anti-heroes, and, yeah, there really aren't any good guys in, you know, Sin City. And I think Sin City is basically Frank Miller's really cynical look at the darkest sides of the big city of America. You know, with corrupt government officials, mob, the mob, sex workers, walking the streets, you know, all that stuff. And yes, the women in this are pretty much, you know, pretty well all objectified. I'd say almost all of them are sex workers, and all of them are defined by their sexuality, by their being sexual objects. And the guys are these macho cliches. Now, this is remarkably engaging. You really get into all three stories, which are given roughly 40 minutes of screen time each, so you know, leading to just about two hours total of movie running time. And they are presented one after the other, and not in chronological order, though if you pay attention to small details, you will be able to place them in correct chronological order. They... This is Rodriguez's best film, at least in my personal opinion, primarily because he did not write the script. He did not, you know, do the story structure, which is excellent here, the characters, which are generally engaging here, or the, yeah, basic, uh, you know, stuff like the dialogue and such, which is also fantastic. This has a lot of monologuing as well, as well, narration, with it being noir, all three of our protagonists narrate to themselves and Frank Miller uses words really well to really give you an idea of a situation or someone's you know status emotionally or physically 
the pacing is great. You're never bored for a second. I would classify this as main, maybe more of a thriller than an action film, although there are definitely action scenes, but compared to some of Rodriguez's other films, it's not as much of an action film, maybe. The cast are all great. The one exception, the, the one person who doesn't do a good acting performance here is Jessica Alban when she ever good. And basically everyone is just perfectly chosen for the role as well. Pretty much the entire... Pretty much everything from the three comics that were adapted here were just exactly translated, you know, directly to the silver screen. There's almost nothing omitted, just a few lines of dialogue and short minor scenes, but other than that this is as direct an adaptation as I've ever seen of a comic. And it's all the better for it. The comics were already rather cinematic and vivid and visual, so it was quite obvious to do it this way, and yeah, it's all the better for it. It's just an excellent film. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.